Second Andrew chapter 9, verse 9. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. If they have cast them away despitefully, shall dwell in torments. Now, we ain't done yet. Give me 2 Thessalonians 2.10. We're coming back here, Cap. We're coming right back here. Yes, sir. 2 Thessalonians 2.10. Go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. And with all deceivableness of sin. Right. In them that perish. In them that perish. Talking about our people. Right. Because they have, because they receive not the love of the truth. Because our people receive not the love of the truth, which is what? Faith in Christ and keeping the commandments. Go ahead. That they might be saved. That they might be saved. Watch this. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Here come. That they all might be damned. What's that word? Damned. That they all might be damned. Damned. That's the same thing Christ said in Matthew 23, 33. Go ahead. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Right. Show them pictures. Show them clips. This is them right there. While we were going over, I needed y'all to show them them pictures. Okay. Now, let's go back to 2nd Ezra. Go back to 2nd Ezra. Yes, sir. Chapter Second, 9. Now, where was you at? I was at, we finished verse 9. We're going to 10 now. No, read 9 again. Yes, sir. 2nd Ezra 9, verse 9. Then shall they be in pitiful case. Now, Chad, put that down. We don't want this one yet. I'll tell you when. Go ahead. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torment. Now, stop. Damnation in this verse, what's the word there in that verse for damnation? Torments. Torments. Read verse 10. Verse 10. For such as in Now y'all could put those other pictures up. Okay. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. Now the benefits, as you can see on the screen, is money. That's the benefits that they have received. Okay? Money, 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 money. Ten richest pastors in Africa. Give me the next one. Preachers of L.A. Next one. Now going back, go back to 2nd Ezra 9. Yes, sir. And 10 again. 2nd Ezra chapter 9, verse 10. For such as in their life have received benefit and have not known me. Notice it. What comes with benefits? Not knowing the Lord. Right. These pastors that have received benefits, they, it says, and have not known me. Do y'all see that? Yes, sir. Verse 11. Verse 11. And they that have loathed my law. See that right there? That's it. And they that have loathed means hates. And they that have loathed my, what's that word, brothers? Law. Law. Go ahead. While they had yet liberty. While they had yet liberty. What do y'all think the uh, church blitz is all about? They have liberty to repent. Right. Our job is to sit down with them and try to win them over. Yep. Read that in. They that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty. And when as yet place of repentance and was, when as yet place of repentance go ahead, was open unto them. That's when the brothers go in front of the churches. That's when the brothers hand out flies to them. That's the place of repentance. Go ahead. Understood not. Understood not. But despised it. Y'all see that? But despised it. Hated it. Go ahead. The same must know it after death by pain. That verse right there. Do y'all see that verse 12? Read it again. The same must know it after death by pain. Read the bottom of verse 9. Bottom of verse 9. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. Now verse 12. The same must know it after death by pain. So the torments is the pain after death. I know what you think. But you just read in Job that everybody's at peace. Everybody is at peace when they die. So then what is the, what is the torment? What is the pain after death? I'm going to show you. Just hold on. But I want you to just put a highlight in your, in, your, in your Bible or in your notebook. Okay? Keys of hell and death. Watch this. Revelation 118. Watch this. Pay close attention. Yes, sir. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 18. I am he that liveth and was dead. Now this is Christ speaking. I am he that liveth. And was what? And was dead. And was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. I am alive forevermore. Here Amen. Come. And have the keys of hell and death. Ah, uh, wait a minute. 
Christ says he has the keys of hell and death. So wait a minute. Hell in the context of the grave, that's the sentence for all flesh, right? Yes, sir. So we ain't talking about that. Everybody dies. Sorrow, trouble, oppression, slavery, that's been going on from the beginning. So that's not talking about that either. Read it again. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. This hell, this death, is that damnation we read about in Matthew 23. 23. Was that a car crash? <laughs> that death in hell here is the torment. That death in hell here is that they shall know it after death by, what's that word it used? Pain. Pain. That's what this is talking about here. Now, go right back to Matthew 23, 33. One more time. Yes, sir. Matthew chapter 23, verse 33. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? The damnation of hell. So Christ is not talking about the grave. That's a sentence for all flesh. He's not talking about sorrow uh, captivity or trouble in the flesh. He ain't talking about that. This is that torment he's talking about that many of our people don't believe in. Watch this, Matthew 10, 27. Yes, sir. Book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 27. What I tell you in darkness, mm -hmm. that speak ye in light. So what I tell you in darkness, meaning what I told you in private, I want you to speak it openly before all the people. Right? And what you hear in the ear. And what I've told you in your ear privately. That preach upon the housetops. I, I want you then to go on the housetops and preach it loud for everybody. Right? And fear not them which kill the body. Wait, wait, wait. He's saying that because what we preach in public will get us killed. What, we're, what he told us privately, right, right. what he told us in parables, he wants us to make it plain to the people. But in the same token, he says now, what you're going to say out there is going to get you killed. Read it again. Yes, sir. Verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. You see that part right there? But are not able to kill the soul. Watch this. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. In where? In hell. In where? In hell. That's the damnation. Man can only kill the flesh, this body. Once this is going, your soul is still alive. You are, the real you is alive. But Christ said, if you disobey, fear the Lord that can kill your body, not just your body, but your soul too. In hell. That's damnation. Now, what verse was that, Cap? That was verse 28 of Matthew 10. Read on. Verse 29. And are not two sparrows sold for a father? Mm -hmm. A one of them shall not and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. So now he says a bird does not die without the father's consent. Go ahead. He's but, talking about us. Go ahead. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. He's saying that's how important you are, you Israelites. Every hair on our head is numbered. Go ahead. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. You're more important than birds, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men. Confess me before men. What does he mean? Verse 28 again. Verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather, fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Now 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men. That's in fear of death. Go ahead. Him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. If you ain't afraid, he said, I'm going to confess you before the heavenly Father. Go ahead. But whosoever shall deny me before men. Because you're scared to die in this flesh. You don't want your body to be burned. You don't want your head to be cut off. You don't want to be stabbed. You don't, be, you don't want to be dragged behind a car. You don't want to be whiplash. What's the thing with the horse when they tie your arms and your legs and rip you apart? I don't want none of that to happen to me. I said what? But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. And guess what that is? Damnation. Christ denying you is damnation. Give me that. Uh, watch this. Proverbs 8.36. The 
book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 36. But he that sinneth against me. He that sinneth against me. I want all you adulterers out there to listen good. He, and you liars. And go ahead. Read it again. But he that, that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. You ain't wronging us. You wronging your own soul. Go ahead. Notice it says, wait, read it again. Read it again. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. Stop. He didn't say wrong your own body. He said you wrong your soul. Watch the next part. All they that hate me love death. So what kind of death you think that's talking about? It ain't talking about the death of your body because he's talking about your soul. This is that torment. This is that damnation he's talking about. Everybody see that? Nation is men leading by example. Nation 